Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. We're here at Edge Live at the Mandalay Bay Hotel in Las Vegas. Kevin Powell is here. He's the Flash Systems Business Line Manager for IBM. Uh, we've been talking Flash a lot. Uh, probably, I don't know, Stu, at least a third of the content, maybe more, that we've touched on has related to Flash. We talk big data. We're talking Flash. We talk Jeff Jonas. We end up talking about Flash. Inhi Cho Su comes on, we talk about Flash. Yeah, Flash is, you know, changing the architecture everywhere and touching everything, so. So Kevin, welcome to theCUBE, really appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Dave, welcome to having me. So, Edge, um, you know, the discussion last year actually wasn't much about Flash. You know, you had some partners here, you guys were reselling some other people's products, that's cool, bang, you make the TMS acquisition, and all of a sudden, in typical IBM fashion, you're right. smoking. That's um, got us off and running. That really, that, that acquisition, kind of the first start, tipping point, if you will, uh, tip of the iceberg in terms of getting the flash ball rolling and really getting the value out to our customers. Yeah, and then April 11th, Steve Mills announces you're going to drop a billion into flash. And uh, he's done that before. You said that in analytics. You ended up putting in, I don't know, 10 billion? Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> We talked about that back in the Linux days. You know, I'm going to bet a billion dollars in open source, so you guys have a good track record there. Um, and we've talked, we talked to Mike Hewn earlier today uh, about, okay, what's happened since, since the 11th, but he you know, underscored there's been a big uptake. We talked to Laura Gio, said, pipeline's good, we yep. like that. <laughs> so you guys had some announcements at this event. Talk about those a little bit, and then we'll get into it. Sure, really the focus of this event has been extending the overall Flash portfolio. So on the April 11th event, we announced our IBM Flash system products, the, the standalone Flash arrays. But part of the focus of this event has been extending the fact that it's not just the IBM Flash system products, but the broader Flash portfolio across IBM. And so a couple of things announced in particular, uh, some things around software. So some caching features, both in our DS8000 portfolio, we're actually taking the easy tier technology in the DS8000 that does tiering between disks and flash today and extending that into the flash in the server. So now we're connecting the flash capability of the storage with the flash capacity within the server and connecting that together with software. So that's a, that flash capacity in the server is a, is a PCIe connect? Correct, that could be a that could be in a SSD a drive form factor, uh -huh. two and a half inch, one point inch, or it can be in our flash adapter form factors, so the PCIe cards. Okay, um, and, and then, so help me understand the connection between that layer and the DS8000 in this case. What are they, what are they doing? How are they talking to each other? And how does that, you know, translate into business value for customers? Sure, so first, it's kind of two layers, if you will. So first there's caching, and then actually with the DS8000, we, we're achieving cooperative caching. So f first, in the server at a caching, what the software will actually do is, as you do reads and writes from the server to the storage, the server will actually determine, well, what, what am I most likely to read next, and keep a small amount of that information local on the server within Flash within the server for a small amount of capacity, very high response time co-located right in that server. And so that's caching, we actually could deliver, uh, we did a statement of direction on software, we're going to deliver a system X that will do caching, as well as caching now with the DS8000 and So power. sorry, that's a read cache. That's right? a read cache. Uh, well, it, and so it's not a persistent uh, medium. Correct, it? it, it's, it's a read cache or a read cache right through. So any writes would happen, would write through to the persistent SAN behind the data, behind the uh, which, server. Which would go to the write cache in the array. Yep. And then eventually asynchronously trickle back to the spinning disk. Correct. Okay. So it could be so it could be to a storage array that is all flash, or it could be to a storage array that was disk or even a uh, a mix of flash and disk okay. with the storage. So a storage array that's all flash, obviously you don't have a destaging oh, bottleneck. Correct. Correct. Uh, a storage array that's spinning disk, you're gonna back up at some point. Right. Okay. And 
Like in the old days, we'd add more disk. Now maybe you're better right. off adding flash. Okay. Right. So we've been focusing a lot prior to this with the GS8000 on easy and store-wise portfolio and SSN volume controller on easy tier, the ability for the system automatically to move data between a flash level tier and a disk tier for hot data. And what this announcement now enables is to extend that all the way to the server so the system can really prioritize what information is hottest that should stay even on the server in flash, what information is hot but maybe need across multiple servers so it's on flash within the storage, and then what information is colder, and I'll put on spinning media yeah. in the storage. Kevin, I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit kind of competitively. Uh, last week, uh, Dell talked about their flash cache technology doing something similar. Uh, a month ago, EMC talked about how they've got their, their server-based solution going down. Um, you know, we, we've dug through uh, a lot of the tiering solution. Right. Um, IBM tends to focus on really trying to fully automate that uh, technology versus trying to put too many knobs in there. Um, how does this fit into that, and you know what can you say about the competitive aspect against what you've seen? Sure, there? and that's where uh, there are a couple of vendors out there. They're, they're starting caching is obviously not a new concept, uh, so customers and vendors out there with caching. What's really key and different from our perspective is with the DS8000, it's cooperative caching. So what that really means is instead of just individual servers doing caching, the DS8000 and the easy tier functionality is aware of what all the cache on the different servers and can act as a central intelligence to control all of that information. So if that centralized server needs to do a copy, a mirror, a backup, or it even knows one server has written the, the information and that's devalidated, it can tell another server, hey, your cache is no longer the latest, go, go update your cache. So it's taking the caching technology that you might deliver just on the server side and giving it kind of a centralized intelligence with the storage environment to coordinate multiple servers doing their caching as well as tiering within the storage itself. So do we get through all the announcements? Or? Well, oh, and, and I, if we, we've gotten sure. through the announcements, if I look at kind of the flash portfolios out there, there's the server-based solutions, there's that mixing between the server and the storage, you've got the flash systems, which is uh, kind of the point solution for all flash. Um, what about hybrid systems? It's been getting a lot of buzz, there's a lot of startups in that space, uh, new architectures that has, you know, not just the one to two percent, but, you know, more flash in there, um, you know, kind of the uh, flash first uh, right. when it comes to the rights, uh, you know, does IBM have a play there? What, what, what do you think about that? Yeah, so in the, in the hybrid environment, that's actually, uh, we've been doing that in our, our store-wise in DS8000 since 2008, and the, the new flash systems are kind of the all flash array. So to put it into context a little bit, step back, really the IBM flash portfolio, it's, it's about three different major categories. You have IBM flash storage, which is our IBM flash system, or all flash DS8000 or hybrid, DS8000 store-wise products. You have IBM Flash software with the capabilities we just talked about with things like caching. And then you have our direct attached portfolio. So IBM Flash adapters, Flash drawers that attach directly to our power and our system X servers, as well as disk capacity. So the hybrid environment, we're still seeing a lot of customers' interest where they're using the Flash, particularly with easy tier technology of store-wise, sand volume controller, or DS8000. To, to optimize, okay, I have a flash capacity for my house data, I'll see 200, 300% uh, performance improvements over my current capacity by putting in just five, 10% flash capacity in front of my current disk capacity. Okay, so, okay, so did we get through the announcements? Anything yes. else that? Uh... The, that's the key, really, is right. the, the software is a new piece and then just uh, ex accentuating the fact of the broader portfolio. So we, we talked a lot of this week uh, about customers putting Couple, couple use cases. One is the application is doing the storage management, you know, replication, data right. protection, whatever, um, and you drop a, a flash system right in, and you know it's pretty clean. The other is the other use case was drop it behind an SVC. We had uh, one Correct. customer, Sprint, was on today. We talked about you know, that with Karim Abdullah. Um, where do you see that going? Is that are, are you guys so is Question, a lot of people ask, yep. is that a stopgap? Are you going to try to build out your own stack with flash systems? Uh, or is SVC the stack strategy? Can you talk about that a little bit? So there, there's two parts of that. There's the, there's the fact of current bundling, buying the two products together uh, and putting it, at, and then there's well, what's the right software feature stack? And 
the, the, while the bundle itself today is a stopgap that we're continuing to invest on, the core SVC code that we leverage across mm -hmm. sand volume control store-wise is a strategic code base for us and feature set that we are looking to bring to the flash system portfolio. So you'll see over time, and we're seeing the marketplace, is the all flash array marketplace really bifurcating into two aspects. One being customers focused on pure performance. They want the lowest latency, highest performance. They don't want any software features or anything getting in their way. They are purely performance driven. And then there's another set of customers we're finding that need high performance, need low latency, but they also need some of the enterprise feature stack, copying, mirroring, uh, virtualization capability. And that's where today we recommend the SAN volume controller with our IBM flash system products. And in the future, that's where we're going to be integrating those technologies together. So as a, as a single IBM flash system offering, you have the choice of pure performance or performance with feature rich uh, software stack. Okay, so uh, when you say over time you're going to integrate those, you mean as a, is that a packaging go to market strategy? Uh, or are you talking about extracting the function out of out of SVC and super gluing it into. I'm talking literally about system. taking the that software code base and bringing in doing further performance optimizations on the hardware. So right now we have a system where you can run, use a sand volume controller in front of a flash system. They've, we've tested them, we've tuned them, they work great together. Right. But we also think there's places in the future where we can actually bring that software code in directly and optimize it for that high performance flash hardware base and deliver even further integration. I see, okay, so time. make that code portable over time. And then of course, so then it fits into an SDS strategy perhaps as, you know, behind an SVC or like you say, direct connect to an app where the application does a pure performance and nothing get in the way, or something in the middle which you know has a lot of legs as well. Right, uh, right. So you have that, that choice and balance of absolute extreme performance, lowest latency, or I need you know high performance, low latency, but I need some mirroring, some copying, some some other feature rich capabilities. You guys bought TMS, you looked at everybody you know that was available at the time. You had your, your pick of the litter, so to speak. <laughs> um, what were some of the decision points you know, that went into that? Um, first of all, how would you describe sort of the, the flavors, the choices that you had, and, and why TMS? Sure, yeah, actually I've been involved uh, since the due diligence, and that was a great experience. I think one thing we see in the marketplace, uh, as in a typical environment that was up and coming, new ideas, a bunch of small companies coming out, maybe some VC funding, some, some ideas, but not necessarily a lot of companies that had really market experience. And that was one of the things we fell in love with Texas Memory System. They had over 30 years in the marketplace. They had a product that was out shipping, proven with customers uh, today, and you know had that real life experience versus just good ideas. So in some instances, we almost refer to Texas Memory System as a 30-year-old startup, because uh, they really almost acted yeah. in that fashion. Small team, hype, uh, very energetic, very quick from a development standpoint, but still real market experience, having been there, having sold in the marketplace, and dealt with you know, DRAM based products originally, then flash technology, but solid state storage devices uh, really for their duration. So what do you think's going to happen in, in this business? Um, you, you, would, you would expect a lot of consolidation, right? Yep. I mean, the market's really not going to support whatever. I don't know how many vendors are out there. There's got to be 50, 60. You right, know, right. Some way, shape, or form. And some, you know, there's some sort of leading the pack, but you, know, you guys have made your move. EMC has made its move, you know, see what HP does. Um, you know, Oracle has yet to make its move, although it's developing some stuff that appears in internally. There's just aren't a lot of whales left right. you know, to buy <laughs> these companies. So what do you think's going to happen? I mean, do you think it's going to be like the tier 1.5 was, um, where they all disappear and get ab absorbed? Or is this market big enough and hot enough to, to support you know, some startups going IPO? Or you know, Do you have an opinion on that? Yeah, I guess my, my own personal opinion. I think you'll definitely see the consolidation to, you know, particularly the major storage vendors, particularly in the enterprise mm -hmm. marketplace. I, I think there's still places where we'll see innovation in software feature stack uh, and capabilities that will cause, n you know, new ideas to come up and new startups. So to me, it's, it won't just consolidate. There'll always be uh, fresh ideas, but it's becoming a scenario to us where, you know, flash is everywhere. I mean, you walk around an event like this and pretty much almost has, everyone has flash in their pocket with a cell phone or some other device. So right. it's really getting to the point of a matter of 
you know, not are you going to use Flash, but how much are you going to use, and are you going to use it in your server, your storage, where are you going to integrate it in? Uh, so I, I, we do see that consolidation in, in the marketplace. Yeah, and you know, we were talking before about the DSA 1000 and, and you know, basically how that's you know, incorporating Flash, and you're seeing that across the industry, but you know, part of me just says, well, at some point, why not just drop in an all Flash array and you know, I'll be happy like my laptop doesn't doesn't have a spinning disc. I'll right. <laughs> I swear I'll never have a spinning disc again. I've sworn myself off spinning disc. Not that there's not a role for it. I, you know, there there certainly is. But you know, the idea of short stroking spinning discs Correct. is just sort of arcane. So, is is am I overstating that? Is that like you know, people have been trying to kill tape for a hundred years? But uh, well, and tape's a very good analogy. Uh, so just like tape, I don't think the spinning disc will go away completely. But as you mentioned doing things like short stroking, 15K speed drives, trying to do the high performance disc segment as spinning discs, that is where Flash is really taking over. And that's where we really see that market disappearing as a disc market, as the high performance, that moving to Flash. But disc will remain as the, the larger capacity, small, you know, uh, slower speed for the, the cold data. And just like tape's still around and still viable business uh, for that cold as data, we really see that becoming the scenario with disk, where you'll have a mechanical spinning disk for the large capacity, and flash really being your performance layer. What are your? Um, I wonder if you also have an opinion. You can talk about the whole notion of, of atomic rights. Uh, we've talked about uh, a lot about that at SiliconANGLE Wikibon. We get excited about it because of the potential to change the way in which applications are designed. Right. Um, I know you guys have, you know, partnerships with uh, guys like Fusion IO and. And, and you've looked at that very carefully. Um, what are your thoughts on that uh, as far as the viability of that? Is it problematic in that essentially you got to change the way in which you write software? Uh, but Or at the same time, it's appealing and alluring because you're bypassing the overhead of, say, the SCSI stack. Right. I wonder if you could right. talk about that a little bit and share with us either your point of view or, or IBM's. Yeah, so I think that's one of the places where we are seeing innovation uh, above and beyond just you know faster faster hardware, faster NAND capability uh, with things like atomic rights. And I, I do think it's going to be disruptive to the software stack, but but that flash overall is almost so disruptive to the software stack. Yeah, right. So we're already in a lot of conversation with our own DB2 teams and uh, other ISVs and application vendors to say, okay, you've done all this work prior to now to avoid I.O. You've tried to do in-memory database and do other things to avoid I.O. Now you have high-speed I.O., now you have all flash storage, how do you better optimize that? How do you start changing your application stack? So whether it's atomic rights or other uh, other innovations, I think there is going to be a change in the application layer and the OS layer to start to say, hey, we have to take advantage of this capability in servers and in storage because that I.O. bottleneck's not going to be Yeah, there. and in-memory's cool, but it's expensive and it's not persistent. Correct. And so those, those two things are problematic and presumably flash can, can solve that. But, uh, but I wonder if we could you know, uh, have a follow-up question on that. So you've got you know, a standard emerging, NVMe, uh, which looks like it's going to take forever to get <laughs> out of the committees. It would be great if we were here today and the industry could, right. could adopt it. So is IBM's strategy to wait? Uh, will you try to develop your own or no comment? Well, I, I can't comment specifically about that one, but I'll, I will comment. I mean, we're not waiting in overall, right? So we're investing a lot of money with the, the public one million, uh, sorry, one billion statement uh, in the investment. But our R and D team, even prior to this, has always focused on how do we better leverage flash technology, how do we better leverage the application stack, uh, and try to. We always, as a company, try to be a leader in terms of setting standards. Uh, in, in the industry. Yeah, I mean, do you think, is, is it technically feasible? The problem, you know, with atomic rights is to get there, it's very disruptive. You can't get from point right. A to point B without essentially either ripping or replacing or completely changing the way you develop applications. I mean, technically, do you think it's even feasible to have a technology that is not disruptive but, but still gets the benefits or even something that's close, maybe even some kind of hybrid? Is that even 
technically feasible? Well, I think we are seeing a move where there's a lot more focus of the application stack on fully integrated solutions. And that's the easiest place for something like that to start. Not going out and trying to deliver you know, a standalone storage device and you're not sure what the OS, the application environment, mm. but things like pure systems where our pure data for operational analytics today uses a large flash capacity. Places like that where we are delivering the application layer, the OS layer, uh, all the way down to the storage, I think that's one of the places where you'll start to see that test out, where you can deliver specific industry applications leveraging that capability because you have the complete stack. Uh, and I think we're uniquely positioned to be able to deliver that complete stack solution end to end to our customers. All right, Kevin, I'm going to give you the last word here. You're, you're, ta <laughs> you're talking to customers. Um, you know, they're sort of questioning, ah, Flash is expensive, I'm not really sure where to use it, or I can use it little bits and pieces here, but I'm, I'm, I'm interested, I want to get started. What's the advice that you give to those, those clients? I think the biggest thing I would say is um, you got to try it. So we have established Flash centers of competencies around the world, benchmarking centers, where customers can come in and get their hands on. I've been through multiple product generations across server and storage, and I've never seen anything like this that has the success ratio when customers actually get their hands on it, they run their production data on it. Uh, we heard from site, um, some of our customers earlier today saying, well, hey, I put it in our performance and our test environments, but then our production even performed better than I expected. Uh, and so that's where I say, whether you're starting small as a flash adapter or ready for an all flash storage array, uh, testing out flash really in your production environment is when you can see it for real. Drop it in and hang on for the ride. Uh, Kevin Powell, <laughs> thanks very much for coming to theCUBE, really appreciate it. All right, keep it right there everybody. We'll be back with our last guest and then we're going to wrap. Uh, Vincent Sue is coming on. He's the CTO of the IBM storage business. Uh, storage is changing. We've been covering it here for the last two days, IBM Edge. This is theCUBE. Keep it right there, we'll be right back. <laughs>